Do you have a little one that's suffering from colic? Are you experiencing hours and hours of crying? Well, you're in the right place. Today we're going to talk about colic, what it is, what you can do about it, and some tips to help you soothe that colicky baby. Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell. I'm the founder of Helping Baby Sleep Method. I'm a chiropractor by training, but really found my passion in empowering parents just like you to teach their little ones to sleep and parent confidently day and night. And don't forget to hit subscribe to never miss a baby sleep tip. Let's talk about baby colic. Okay, what's the definition? Well, the true definition is crying of three hours or more in one day and crying three hours or more for more than three days a week. Can you imagine? I'm so sorry if that is you. That is just so stressful. And the research does actually show that it is a burden on families. It often is associated with a higher incidence of maternal depression, as well as an increased cessation, stopping, of breastfeeding. So it is definitely a lot, okay? What is the root cause of colic? The research shows that 10% of cases have a true organic cause. There is a root cause. That includes, number one, having a cow's milk allergy. And that will often show up with um, bloody diarrhea, mucousy diarrhea, feeding difficulties, weight gain, and a very, very fussy baby who does not sleep well. Okay. The second cause can be a lactose overload, which often shows up as explosive gas and frothy um, diarrhea as well. And the third cause can be reflux. So reflux is, you know, kind of like adult heartburn. It's a splashback of the acid from the stomach. And reflux really does exist on a continuum. You can have happy spitters who do great, even though they have a little bit of reflux. And then on the other end of things, you can have kids who are extremely uncomfortable, having the burning in their esophagus constantly, who have trouble feeding, arching at the breast or the bottle, um, obviously difficulty sleeping, as well as just being very fussy during the day. So those are the three organic causes. So that means that 90% of the cases of colic have no known reason why they have it, okay? They really don't know. From my experience helping parents to sleep and having their babies sleep for almost 10 years now, I can tell you there's one more reason, and that is being overtired. So being overtired for some of our families can actually mimic colic. This dawned on me about five years ago in my Helping Baby Sleep School where one of my clients, second time parent, wrote, you know what, I'm just so ecstatic that my newborn is sleeping so well and you've given me these tools. I had no idea about the timing of sleep. And then she went on to say, you know, I realize now, looking back with my older baby who had colic, quote unquote, I realized she was probably just really overtired because I didn't realize that there were certain kind of windows. Now, when I say that, I don't want to undermine any of you who are truly already watching timing and suffering with colic. It is a really, really hard thing to deal with. The good news is that most kids grow out of colic naturally around three to four months of age. But, you know, let's talk about now some things that you can do to help. So the first thing would be, hey, let's focus on timing. Maybe you are one of the small percentage that it's a timing issue. So most kiddos can't stay awake in the newborn stage more than about an hour to an hour and a half. And I'm putting a link down below into my Helping Baby Sleep Quiz, which will give you six simple questions to answer and help you with the timing of your little one's sleep, how much they need in a daytime for naps, and how long they can really comfortably stay awake for between sleep uh, periods. Because something I didn't know is that if you keep a kiddo up too long, it actually gets harder to get them to fall asleep and then stay asleep. So when I say overtired, this could be from days, weeks, or even months of not getting enough sleep. And what it looks like is it's impossible to get my child to fall asleep, and then they wake up frequently in the night. And there is no underlying medical condition that we touched on below, okay? So overtiredness, it's like a negative feedback loop. It's harder to fall asleep and stay asleep. And then on the opposite side of things, there is a positive feedback loop, which is well-restedness. The more well-rested your kiddo, the easier it is to get them to fall asleep and then stay asleep. What else could you do to help your little one with colic sleep better? Well, you know, I would be keeping feeding away from sleeping because if the underlying etiology is something to do with their GI system reflux or um, a sensitive GI tract, I don't want to be packing them with food before I lie them down for a nap or nighttime sleep. I want to keep feeding away from sleeping. Even keeping them upright after the feed can help, um, you know, minimize or help the digestion of that. The other thing you can do is keeping them close to you. So 
you know, I work with a lot of parents in the newborn stage that say my baby will only sleep when held. Okay, we have another video on that that you can go watch. But the idea is that you are their soother, their pacifier, that things that helps them feel safe and secure. And most kids who are uncomfortable will sleep better on someone. Even though it's not safe sleep approved, those kids who are really, really uncomfortable, and I'm talking about the newborn stage here, will want to sleep on you. So carrier sleeps, you know, having them in there, going for walks, because your mental health is really important too. I think it is really important to get outside, get some exercise, get some fresh air, and having them in those carriers can be one way to do things. The other thing you can do is Dr. Harvey Karp's five S's to help soothe your baby. Shushing, swaddling. And I often have parents say, my kiddo doesn't like to be swaddled. They move around a lot. Well, then often it's not that they don't like to be swaddled. It's that they have something bugging them that's causing them to move around a lot. And often that can be the need to burp or the, like gas in their lower intestine. And we talk about burping and the um, gas manual release techniques in that other video that I mentioned down below. Okay. Um, swaying your baby, having them in a side lying position on the left side down can often be helpful because that just helps anatomically where their large intestine is sitting. Sucking, so pacifiers are super helpful with kids with any kind of GI issue because that sucking motion actually causes a little bit of um, smooth muscle contraction which helps move the food through and help them feel more comfortable. Shushing, swaying, side lying, sucking, and swaddling, okay, and keeping them close to you. And remembering that this too shall pass. So the research does show the colic really does end um, three to four months of age, right? And in the meantime, just go back to the basics. Burping, bicycles for legs. Watch that manual video as well. And the timing of sleep. Don't forget to get our, our timing sleep chart in the quiz down below. Have a great day, everybody.